The stock market is on fire, and you could argue it's all thanks to aggressive moves by the Fed. What else, right? So what happens to your investments when the spigot is turned off? According to the Wall Street Journal, a plan is already in place. Quote, Federal Reserve officials have mapped out a strategy for winding down an unprecedented $85 billion a month bond buying program. Now, that's according to John Hilsenrath, writing in the Wall Street Journal. He writes, they plan to reduce the amount of bonds they buy in careful and potentially halting steps. Joining me now, Steve Crowley, host of Steve Crowley's American Scene, David McIlvaney, CEO of McIlvaney Financial Group, and Alan Haft, author of You Can Never Be Too Rich. David, I'll start with you. You told our producer that uh, this report carries a lot of weight with professional investors. Why so? Well, a lot of people will listen to John and look at that as an indication from the Fed what they're doing almost on a pre-announced basis. But keep in mind that the Fed can try to move the market without necessarily doing anything from a change in policy perspective. They can just want to see investors move a certain direction. And I think we're at a point where we want to see activity in the mortgage refinance area. We want to see activity right. in real estate. We want to see some confirmation that the economy is going to continue to move All right. it towards progressive better numbers and, and they want to try to motivate that in the market. Um, here's an interesting <laughs> survey. When will the Fed pull back? It was a, a survey, I believe, of economists. 55% uh, said third or fourth quarter of this year. Uh, next year or later, 45%. Nobody expects the Fed to boost purchase. Uh, Alan, to you, what do you make of this story and how are you telling your clients to react? Yeah, well, there's three things that will make the Fed actually start raising rates. It's unemployment hitting about 6.5%. It's a, it's a pickup in the economy, and it's also a pickup in inflation. And we're not seeing any three of those going on right now. So I'm telling people, listen, there's some risk out there. You've got to watch it. You have to tune up the portfolios, but don't jump to conclusions so fast and furious like a lot of people are. Well, uh, David Allen here making a very good point that this economy is not all we've told it was cracked up to be. Uh, how does that influence what you're doing for clients right now? You know, we're looking at durable goods orders, which continue to fade. A major divergence as the S&P moves higher. Durable goods are moving lower. Copper's moving lower. Your standard in indicators of real economic activity, they're not showing th what, what the S&P is. And so we see some weakness there. Uh, would assume a 10 to 20 percent decline. And uh, that, that, could be, that could be orchestrated here just, again, with, with the notion that the Fed's going to, to begin this taking the foot Ouch. off the pedal. They may or may not do that. Steve, do you agree with that? A 20% decline in the offing? Yeah, it's very possible. I think 8 to 10%, even without the Fed backing off on their easing, Jerry. Wow. But I'd be very cautious here and, uh, you know, set those stop losses and, uh, you know, stick with the dividend paying stocks. And what uh, David's talking about there, the resource stocks, I like those. And as the prices back off on those, I'd be a buyer. Alan, you know what I see here is individual investors have been reluctant to get involved. And just as they're starting to, just as they're thinking, you know, maybe the stock market is a great place to invest. Invest. And maybe here comes a 20% sell-off. Do you think yeah. that's likely? Yeah. I don't. I'm taking time. a different opinion than the. What do you uh, say? Uh, I think you know if people are investing in good quality things and they have a nice, well-diversified portfolio, stick with it. If you have the time, if you have the forecast of hey, I'm not going to uh, try to time the market. Stay with it as long as you're in good quality. Well, we've got a long way to go. What are the big... Go ahead. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, quality won't protect you in this environment. To initiate a position in the S&P 500 at these levels, if you look at a 10-year rolling average of the price earnings multiple, you're locking in, at best, a 2% return over the next decade. If you want to take risk in the equity market for a 2% return, which factoring in inflation is, is kind of an ugly number, that's really what you're signing on for here. Alan, uh, the best right, money is made right, in the market then, when you're then, buying at lows, not at highs. But then again, somebody's trying to time and predict the market, which nobody can do. So although I understand what he's saying, I also think that as long as, you're, as long as you understand where you're going and what you're doing with your money, you shouldn't panic and you shouldn't try to digress or retreat from the market because once you retreat after a 20% decline, what usually mm -hmm. happens? And the worst declines we've seen right around the corner is a great, in, is a good, great increase and you don't want to miss those bumps well, in the market. Well, you know, that's a really good question, Steve, to you. Can, I mean, if we yeah. do have some kind of pullback on what the Fed's doing, can the market recover quickly, or is it going to take a long time? Let me tell you, that last pullback after the financial right. crisis, that was a doozy, my friend. I don't want to go through that again. 
Yeah. Well, it could take a long time if economic indicators don't improve. But, you know, I interviewed Sir John Templeton at his home many years ago, and he said he made all the money in his life buying at the market lows when everybody was running for the doors, is what he said. Buy low and sell high. And that was his advice back then in the 80s to uh, small investors. Uh, if I can only figure out what low and high is. Steve, David, and Alan, thanks for coming on tonight. Uh, real pleasure. You guys sure. did a great job. Thank you so much.